All right, so I just had to make a video about this game right here because it is a masterpiece and it needs to be praised that way. And for those of you who don't know who, what this game is somehow, it's Resident Evil 4, the remake um, of an already amazing game. I just wanted to talk about this game because it it's probably my favorite game that came out in 2023, besides for maybe Spider-Man 2. Um, Although I was a little disappointed with that and how it's being handled recently, but I mean, I don't really blame them because of all the stuff that's been happening over there at the studio. But um, I plan on making another video about that game, just kind of going over it. But this game, Resident Evil 4 Remake. First of all, there's going to be some slight spoilers throughout. Um, I just thought I'd throw that out there. If you somehow still haven't played it, um, I would pick it up play it um i didn't get it on launch hence why this video is actually like way later than when it came out because <laughs> it came out almost a year ago now but but i just wasn't in the financial place to be buying a 70 dollar game at launch so i had to wait till it was on sale but yeah so first of all this game is just amazing i mean like even the title screen alone like that you don't get many title screens like this anymore you know, with this much charm and like, I mean, just look at it, you know, everything about the world, the sound, you know, the characters, the enemies, everything, everything is so detailed and just, just perfect in every way. It, it, it's, it, it's hard to find games with the, this amount of detail anymore, you know, like with the amount of EA and Ubisoft crap that's out there. Some of the Sony first party games, obviously those are going to be, you know, very detailed, everything like the Spider-Man game. Again, amazing and super, you know, super detailed and like it sounds awesome, you know, the sounds are great. It's super spooky and, you know, even like the, like, just even like the, the more minute sounds, like the gun sounds, they're just so like, wow, that sounds nice and that, that, that looks nice, you know? I thought I'd point that out. Like the, the clack of the shotgun, the, the the very first shotgun that you get, you know, it's like, it's, I don't know. It's it's just, it's great, you know, it's great. And it's, it's really fun. Like it's really fun. The gameplay is probably the best gameplay we've got in a modern Resident Evil game. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's the best game of the modern Resident Evil landscape you know, like, hands down. Like I said before, it probably would have been my game of the year if Spider-Man 2 didn't exist and if this wasn't a remake. <laughs> um, because, you know, obviously this game already existed, you know, almost 20 years ago. Um, and, you know, uh, this is just a remake of that original game, which has been re-released on every platform since. I replayed the original to kind of get a feel of how uh, of how it played and how it felt to play that game and stuff like that, um, and to just compare the stories and everything. A lot changed, um, but for the most part, I am pretty happy with the changes that they made and the things that they decided to cut. Um, although some of the things that you know they did decide to cut were a little bit like you know. I kind of wish they kept those in because it, it just it, it gave it the charm that it that it needed, you know. I'm still I'm still replaying this game to this day, and it's still it's still coming, you know. The only couple changes that I wasn't really happy with is that they um, they made it more of a serious tone. Like there's definitely still like the jokes, and Leon is still just a but just as much of a of a wisecracker as he was before. They gave him more character development since Resident Evil 2. This one, no, now he's more of a serious guy and, you know, he's he's a little bit more grizzled because he's seen a lot. Obviously, he's recovering a lot from the trauma that happened in Raccoon City in 2. Again, if you haven't played that one either, go ahead and play that one. It's great. One of the best zombie games ever made. So yeah, he's 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 less of a he's less of a smart ass and he's more serious, but I don't think that really matters. Um He's still great either way, and um, yeah, I don't know. I don't mind. I don't mind it. Obviously, I played it on the PS5, which I've mentioned before, and I played it 
on this guy right there and that's what it's running now that's what's going on here now but anyways um so yeah it looked incredible and amazing i still can't believe what they're able to accomplish with technology that's in the playstation 5 like i i, I it's it blows my mind like you can see all of the gory details and just like everything just is so well detailed and like fine-tuned to make it so so visually pleasing <laughs> and everyone you know leon ashley Luis, ada uh fucking sadler they're all like so well crafted i don't know like it's everyone's super hot and like really like good looking like why what <laughs> these people are supposed to be going through something traumatic and why are they wearing like a full face of makeup and you know like high heel boots ada i'm looking at you anyways speaking of ada uh, i also played through the separate ways dlc that was again fantastic um the grapple gun and her like you know a bunch of her tech abilities like her eye tracker thing that was great the the boss fight with um with Ramon's uh, big dude there, uh, the black robes bug guy. I don't remember his name. He was, he was really fun. It was, th those boss fights were really cool. I like how he gave, I like, I like how he was able to like produce more of himself and then like they were hallucinations though, so it was different. I don't know, it was just, it was, it was just very fun. And, and seeing how it interwove with the story and like on my first playthrough, um for leon at the end of the game you save ada from hanging up in the in in some rafters and stuff like that and and you just get this and you and you shoot her down and then she just goes somewhere else but now you see where she goes and what she's doing is she's going and getting the special rocket launcher which you then use to kill sadler at the very end of the game it, it ties everything so well together and just it's great I don't know. And also, I loved playing as Ada. That's all I'm going to say about that. My first playthrough, I played it on hardcore mode because I was just like, I played the old one. It, it can't be that much harder than the old one. Like, I mean, I really like how the old one controlled, but I also don't like it <laughs> now playing this one. Loaded up a random save from that one, and I was like, oh my god. I didn't realize how much the quality of life controls from this one actually meant and you know actually fit right now i am actually i'm still setting up for my uh professional s plus playthrough i have to beat the game on professional with at least an s to get um the chicago sweeper gun which i guess is necessary to do that i don't know i'm following a guy on youtube uh, i i hope that goes well um if you have any other pointers like you know if i should get something else instead of the Chicago Sweeper, go ahead and leave them in the comments because I'm open to ideas and suggestions and all that. The castle part was probably my favorite. I I liked it in the first game and the first game's music was great in the castle. It still rings in my head to this day. Um, yeah, so I don't know, but the castle part was, was great. And in the original, it was, it was great too, but it was just a little, it was a little weird, especially how Ashley somehow got tricked by like the most obvious trap in the world the village part you can speed through really easily and then the castle part as well you can kind of speed through but it's still it's i feel like where a lot of the bulk of the game is despite so much of the heavy marketing towards the village part but you know that's where a lot of the memorable moments come from anyways like you know where's everybody going bingo um i'm glad that that line made the cut though but on you know other other lines that didn't make the cut that I wish made the cut, the no thanks bro line to, to Raymond. A lot of the voice calls between the villains and Leon, like the one between um, him and Sadler where Sadler was like, oh, why don't I introduce you to it? And then Leon said, oh, you can't remember the name? Truly a senior moment. Ah, I have an idea. Since you're here, why don't I introduce you to it? It should keep you busy. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> that that's probably my favorite line that I wish got in the that, that I wish got in the game, but oh well. I'm a little sad that we that the it fight got cut from uh, the main story, but it is an Ada's game. It is an Ada's campaign. So if you were missing that too, you can go and play that. And it's it's even better this time. It's even better. I'm thankful we got the throne scene though. That I don't think I would have been able to forgive Capcom if they cut that from the game. Uh, it's in a different spot though. It's not on the island anymore like it was in the first game. Uh, instead, it's in the throne room on uh, in the castle. Yeah, and it's easy to miss there too, but there is a little side quest that kind of takes you out to that place. So, you know, you could probably, you'd probably be able to find it. And if you're doing the side quest from the merchant, speaking of the merchant, while I miss some of the older lines that they cut, some of the new lines um, are pretty good. You know, they, they make up for it. And um, I don't know, I just overall like the new merchant. I was really skeptical on how they were gonna do the merchant. Um, because in the original game, you know, he was, it was, it was the merchant. You can't really do that again. It, it was so iconic that you can't do it again. Like seeing the demo and seeing the trailers and everything like that, I was like, all right, you know, maybe they can do it. But again, like, you know, like how they handled Resident Evil 3 remake. I don't know. I was, I was a little disappointed with that. <laughs> With the amount of stuff that they cut. It was like, no, we're not going to include any of that. And it's just going to be a shitty four hour game that's not very fun. <laughs> I think Capcom learned learned from their mistakes and they, you know, they, they put their heart and soul in the Resident Evil 4. So going back to the merchant, which I got sidetracked a lot there. The, the merchant has a different voice line for like each gun that you buy. And it's just really cool. Like, ah, that there's a real boomstick, mate. It will reduce your target to a bloody pulp. That one's for my favorite gun, the riot shotgun. This gun turns heads into pumpkins, mate. Take this for a rampage through the patch. That's also another good one. That one's for the stingray, um, the sniper. I wanted to read those off because those, you know, those were my favorite ones. And then also you, you can't, you can't read a merchant line without reading it in the merchant's voice. You know, it's just, you can't do it. Um, and I like how they introduced the merchant. It's still like, you know, in, in the original, like he just kind of pops out of nowhere and says, come over here and, you know, buy something from me, you know? And that was like, you know, that was pretty much right after the village fight. Speaking of the village fight, it was fucking fantastic. I, I, I like, it was awesome. The first game, it, it really showed you what this game was and it was telling you, hey, I have a statement to make and I'm making it and you're here for the ride. And then this one, it took that, it took that statement and then it amped it up to like 11 and then just told us, all right, wait for it. Here you go. Have it again, but better this time. Uh, it was everything that I loved about the original Village Fight ramped up to 11. Something that I'm actually really proud of um, is I was actually able to kill Dr. Salvatore on my first playthrough because I wasted all my ammo on him. I just, I pumped him full of lead with my shotgun and my pistol. I didn't care. And I was able to kill him. Uh, I was really happy with that. And also, there is so many skips for different chapters. You don't get a skip in every chapter, but there are so many skips that you can just skip like a certain section, like the wrecking ball section. Um, if you just throw a couple heavy grenades down in front of the wall, then once Ashley hits the wall again, it'll just break instantly in one hit. And then there's that. With like the anti-aircraft gun, you can um, throw a couple more grenades up there and it will destroy it. Or you could just hit it with a rocket launcher, but you know, the grenades are cheaper, so. Um, and then the village fight, you can actually skip it. If you don't want to do it, like on repeat playthroughs, you know, it's kind of annoying. It does kind of get, you know, a little bit annoying because it's like, I've done this a hundred times so far, you know, I just want it to end. Um, you can just go ring the church bell, you know, um, off in the distance. If you get up on the roof where you get the shotgun and you exit out the window right, right. So you go up the stairs and then, the, and then you turn right, there's a window right there. If you jump through that window, you'll be on a roof. Um, and you can just shoot, um, 
the church bell off in the distance with a rifle, a pistol, whatever. Whatever can hit it, you know, whatever that has some sort of range, not the shotgun, obviously. Speaking of that, um, in the DLC, we figure out that Ada is the one that rings the church bell and is over there at the time of the village fight. So it's kind of funny when, like, you skip it with, like, a rocket launcher or something, which is what I did <laughs> the first time. Um, I skipped it with the infinite rocket launcher, and I just shot a rocket over there, and then it blew up. So if Ada was up there, she would have, like, just, she would have died, you know? And then, like, what if Leon shot the rocket over there, and then he goes over there, and he's like, all right, I found the church, but also I found something else. Here's the girl that I was crushing on in the last game a couple of years ago, and she's supposed to be dead, but now she's actually dead, and it looks like she got blown up, and I just shot a rocket at the bell. I think that was me. <laughs> you know, it would just, it'd be, it'd be really funny. And in the time of the main story, we didn't know Ada was up there, you know, so. My favorite fight, my favorite boss fight in the entire game was probably Mendez. He's so cool. Like the, the way his spine comes out and then it's all like centipede-like and it's just like all crawly and creepy in the first game it was great too and you know i i loved being in the slaughterhouse being all having it all on fire and like so much fire explosions going off everywhere and it was just it was really cool and then you got this big monster who's half a body and then the rest of his spine is just coming out of his body and it was really cool and the way they did it was really cool although i do wish that we got to see um, like all of the transformations for the bosses because in the original game you got to see every detail you know but this this time around you don't see like any of the transformations for any of the bosses you know it's all it all happens off screen when Leon goes to fight Ramon he shoots him in the head after telling him he talks too much which he does you know you can actually shoot the, um, the little intercoms that he talks to you through um, and he'll just he'll shut up and then he'll start, he'll giggle a little bit, then he'll shut up, which is just a cool little neat, you know, a neat little Easter egg detail. So Leon shoots him, um, and then he falls backwards, um, and then he transforms underneath all of the platforms in the castle. I mean, I don't know why it's there, but like, whatever, who cares? It's a video game, so. Um, he transforms underneath there, and then he, then he comes back up flying, and he's now his full Venus flytrap form and it's, it's gross and disgusting and it's really cool and I love his new form I love his new boss fight it's really cool and I love how he's not just stuck in one spot anymore I wish there was a little bit more you know scare to it I wish there was a tiny little bit more horror but I mean the original wasn't that scary anyways either like the only scary scary parts were kind of like Ashley's part where she's playing around with the knights and the and the armor and stuff like that. And then the part on the island when you meet the regenerators. Um, and um, that's kind of the only part Those that that's kind of scary. It still would have been cool if they played into that uh, horror a little bit better, but you know, it, it's fine. It's not like it's the end of the world and it doesn't really kill the game in any ways. And then obviously I love how they included the infinite rocket launcher. They kept that in. You can actually get a charm from the Merchant's Shooting Gallery, which I'll talk about in a minute, but you can get a charm of Leon with a rocket launcher and it takes, I think, I think it's 20% off the rocket launcher. Um, and that also includes the infinite rocket launcher. Once you buy it, the Merchant says, um, the Merchant says like something about what's caused some mayhem or something, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know, just little details like that. That's just, it makes the game so much better, you know? Going on to Krauser, um, he's really cool. I really like him. Um, I did like the older voice actor, but I don't mind this one. I actually like it. It fits very well with his character and it makes him seem a little bit more unhinged, like all the time. And it's just, it's just, he's just a cool fight overall, you know? Um, the first fight was really cool because it's limited to knives and like it really makes the parry system show and it's just, it makes it really cool and fun and you can really... You, you really gotta get good at timing with the parries, especially on hardcore mode. Uh, there's not much time that you have to parry, um, especially Krauser, because he attacks fast with his knife. And then, you know, he, 
you, he, he'll attack you like five separate times with the, with the knife. Parrying, like I said, it's super fun. It's super rewarding too, because it'll open him up to a melee attack. So then Leon can do his little spin kick thing, which I'm glad made the cut. I was hoping they would be like, all right, no, that's too goofy. We'll go ahead and cut that and give him a different kick or something, you know? Um, that's very fun. And the spin kick is made even like better like when you do a melee attack it like sounds like it sounds like it hurts because you can hear the bones cracking and like and then also the first spin kick that he does to the first ganado the hunter's lodge literally just snaps his neck against the wall So it just makes you wonder, if, is Leon, like, you know, slightly superpowered, or no? But he's he's not, you know, it, it's, he's he's not superpowered at all, but he's just, like, it's, he's just really strong, I guess. I don't know, like Chris punching boulders, I, I don't know. Now on to the, the worst enemy in the game, the Vistador. Holy shit, I hate those flying fuckers. Oh my god, they will come out of nowhere, and they will come in, like, hordes. The previous game was hard, but like at least that had at least that had like some sort of trade off. You could kill them with one shot, you know. You could if they were flying in the air, you you could kill them with one shot regardless of what gun you use. And then the fact that they don't give you a gem each time anymore is kind of disappointing. They still sometimes give you gems. Um, I guess it kind of makes sense, you know, with the new with the new you know gemstone and treasure system, which I'll talk about in a minute. The shooting range is now actually like really fun. I mean, in the old game, it was fun too, but this one, it's just, it's so fun. And also, once you get to the bonus round, you get to hear the sweet, sweet music of the intro of the first game again. And it's just, it's it's so cool that they that they put that in there. It's 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 really cool because otherwise, to hear the original music, you have to you have to pay. I think it's like two bucks or something like that. I don't know. I bought that with it because I was just like, I want to get the, um, I want to have the old music. My first playthrough I played with the new music and new sounds and everything like that. I feel like sometimes the new music kind of just blended into the background a little bit too much. You know, it's it's background music. It's it's there for a reason. But at least with the old game, it was memorable. You know, like I can still kind of hear like I can still kind of hear the castle music, like I said before, you know, and then all the all the treasure sounds when you pick up a treasure, it's just like that that ping and it's I don't know it's so satisfying to hear because you're like oh man I did something good and then you know a different sound for when you pick up ammo you know if you pick up a if you pick up ammo it kind of gives like a little gun clack just back to back to the shooting range uh, I got really sidetracked there about the music but um you complete the games and then you get certain tokens whether it's gold or silver or whatever and then you can go and gamble those and get little charms for your case and those charms give you certain you know, certain buffs or certain power-ups or whatever to help you in your journey. And, um, you know, like a couple ones are like the Leon with the rocket launcher I said before. And they're all the models of the old game as well, so that's really cool. You can get an Ada Wong one. That one's for like, uh, I think 30% off with body armor repairs, something like that. You can get the, the striker shotgun, um, which increases your movement speed by 8%, which is just a little nod to the original, um, to the original game where there was a glitch called the Dipman glitch, which it would, if you had the striker shotgun and then you switched to a weapon really, a different weapon really fast for your inventory um, while aiming down your sights, boost your movement speed up to like 50% or something like that. I don't know, it was, it was really weird and it was really crazy. So that was like super big in the speedrunning community of that game. And like, obviously all the Resident Evil games are super speedrunnable. All of them have insane speed runs um i think the resident evil 2 speed run actually like the resident evil 2 remake um speed run is like 20 minutes or something like that my fastest time is like 45 minutes or something like that so, so i'm just like sitting here like what the hell how do they get how do they get it down to 20 minutes like 19 minutes or something like that i don't know it's crazy you know and this game is the same you know you can get it down to so so small of a time for such a long game like this game the main story took me about like 14 or 16 hours to get through it, like it, on a standard playthrough it's like 12 hours long like i went out of my way to get every treasure and do all the 
extra stuff, like all the extra merchant quests and stuff like that. So I, I, I took my time with the game. That's why I took a long time. But so that, that's another thing that I want to talk about. The merchant quests. Um, those are really cool. They range from a bunch of different things that you could do, uh, whether that's killing a couple rats in a certain area or getting the blue medallions, which first show up in the farm area so yeah instead of it being like a, a flat 15 blue medallions throughout the game and then you get a free gun a bunch more blue medallions and you go and kill them and that or you go and destroy them and then the, the merchant will give you um spinels which are a different form of currency now which you can trade for um, you know treasure maps different cases and different you know all this other kind of stuff you can get a yellow herb and some some gemstones and stuff like that and it's just little bonuses that you can kind of do along the way and like i said the cases um you can customize your case and they will give you special perks i think the i think the red one is the increased drop rate for red herbs and then there's a gold one which increases drop chance of um pesatas so the the, the original starter case comes with a, a increased drop rate for handgun ammo i don't know and then i just want to talk about uh leon's guns here for a second too because um upgrading them is super fun and even like the starter guns you know like they all have their own little different perks and once you get them fully upgraded you can get the exclusive upgrade which is the same from the other game you and that will that will increase a certain stat or something like that like the striker shotgun i think that increases its power by two like to by two times or maybe that's a different maybe that's the riot gun i don't know i don't know it's one of the shotguns that does that and then like you know and then uh then the knives the knives are also upgradable and they have durability and stuff like that and you can get you can get once you kill krauser you get his knife and then that's uh, gonna be that's gonna be slower but it's gonna do way more damage that'll kill a regular village ganado in like one hit you know, it's insane. You just poke them and then they die. <laughs> like, but then if you fully upgrade Leon's combat knife there, the one that he starts with, that one is super fast. Like, it does less damage, but it's super fast. Like, you can swing that thing like it's no tomorrow. Uh, it's in, it's insane how fast that thing can go. And then there's some just random, like, fodder knives. Like, um, so you can get, like, the kitchen knife and then, like, the boot knife, which is just the kitchen knife's cooler older brother. Yeah, they're like they're both pretty much the same and they take up two they only take up two spots in your inventory, so it's always nice to have a couple of those just in case your main one breaks. If you get the um if you kill all of the uh clockwork castellanes, I don't know how to say that. I still don't know how to say that. But anyways, it's the collectible little um uh Raymonds there that you can shoot and then it that they're in every Resident Evil game. If you get all, if you get all 16, there's one in each chapter. If you get all 16, um then you can get the primal knife from the extra content store. And that is the knife from the original game. You know, its little quirk is that it's it's in it's unbreakable. You can't you can't break it. It's great. But you have to unlock the exclusive first for it to do that. But And then um, that also kind of leads me into the next thing, the challenges list. There is a, a shit ton of challenges that come pre-baked into the game that you can do. Most of them you'll do on your first playthrough. It's like complete chapter one, you know? Like most people are just going to get that on their first playthrough, I would, I would assume, you know? Somehow, unless you can just skip chapter one and start on chapter two, which... I don't think that's possible, but yeah. But then there's other ones like um, kill a Garador with with a knife only. You know, the 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 Wolverine looking guys. Uh, a couple completion points, um, and then you can buy something in the shop, whether that's like you know a, a, an in-game model or something like that, or some concept art or something. You know, and you get a whole little thing or a costume for a character. You know, um, and then certain things unlock certain you know abilities and certain things that you can get so take for example like the uh the cat ears for leon i think that's how that works if you i think if you put the cat ears on then you get infinite ammo unless you have to it's unless it's like a toggle in the settings or something because i'm still working to get that you but for that you need to get you need to complete the game on professional plus or on professional and get an s plus which the only way you can do an S plus is by doing a new 
run. It's it's great because it just adds replayability to the game. Like right now, I have about 120 hours put into the game. So yeah, um, I don't know. I've played the shit out of this game. This is probably my favorite remake that they've ever made. Um, maybe even my favorite Resident Evil game that they've ever made because it's just like, it took what they did so good in Resident Evil 4, the original, and then they did it again <laughs> and made it better, you know? Like, I don't know, it's just, it's so good, you know? It's so good, I don't know. If you guys want me to go into more of an in-depth dive of the game and like, how to, and like the story itself, I just kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit here. Um, but I can do that um, if you want me to. I'd probably put that on my other channel because that's kind of, a, that's probably would be a more uh, longer form video. So I will leave that in the, uh, in the description. Uh, my other channel, if you want to go check that out, that is a uh, part one of the Cryptid Iceberg. Um, and don't worry, part two is still coming. I just have had some delays and um, I need to, I need to upgrade my computer before I uh, do that because it's it's just not good enough to edit those big videos. The 40 series supers just came out, so I'll probably just wait till those kind of come down a little bit in price or something and then just build my own machine, I don't know. Uh, if I end up doing that um, and you guys would like like a video about me building a computer, um, I could do that. that, that would be pretty fun to do. So if you did like this video, leave a like. If you didn't, uh, go ahead and dislike it. I don't care. And uh, if you really liked it, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, tell me if you actually really liked it or not. I'm sure this video was kind of a long video, so um, yeah, I'll go ahead and stop it there. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.